Hello everyone, welcome to BA Computer Animation and Visual Effects Online Open Day. Thanks for coming today. Um, this is a brand new course and we're very excited to be sharing it with you today. So I'm Billy, I'm course leader and also visual effects subject lead. Um, I've worked in visual effects for a long time as a compositor, worked for quite a lot of different companies, and I'm also accredited by the Foundry to teach Nuke, which is the industry leading software for compositing. And I'm also going to introduce our 3D subject lead next, Sam Rowe, who's here. Sam? Hello, I'm the 3D subject lead for the new program, and I have been a 3D artist and animator um, for over 12 years. Um, I've worked across games, animation, uh, motion graphics, pretty much everything. So um, I'm, I'm excited to get students that are interested in a wide range of 3D outputs and I'm happy to support people on all sorts of projects. So uh, just before we get started, this course sits within uh, what's called the Screen School at LCC. So we have, uh, within Screen School, there's three departments. There's film and television, there's sound and music, and then here there's moving image and digital arts, and BA Computer Animation sits within the, the MEDA um, program, alongside other BA programs such as Games Arts, Virtual Reality, Animation, and also another uh, a, a few uh, postgraduate courses as well. So what is this course about? So um, 3D computer animation and visual effects. We have two specialisms. There's 3D computer animation and visual effects. And uh, these two disciplines overlap. And there's a big intersection, as you can see here, we've got, uh, put 3D for visual effects. Um, so there is a big intersection between these two things. But there's also... Um, a side of 3D that isn't necessarily involved or isn't involved in visual effects. It's not 3D for visual effects. And there's also a side of visual effects that doesn't necessarily um, include any 3D in it. So this course looks at the intersection of visual effects and computer animation and the myriad of art forms that surround the two. Um, there is an expansive range of career pathways and subsections of, of industries um, that spring from these two disciplines. Um, so you've got 3D animated films, as in like Pixar, or you've got 3D for games. Um, you've got 3D for visual effects, which is quite different from 3D for games. Um, often involves a lot of realism and integration into live action. You've got the more film-based side of visual effects, like compositing and all sorts of sort of tricks and playing around and manipulating film for all sorts of effects, which is a massive side of visual effects. Um, and there's also which is generally an unknown sort of side of visual effects often. It's not always kind of large-scale films. Um, Often VFX can be used in a lot of sort of episodic or commercials and people might not even realise. So all of these um, industries are interrelated. So, for example, you could be an animator or a compositor or a lighting artist or a storyboard artist for any one of these areas um, and more. And part of what we'll be doing on the course is actually sort of you'll be learning um, about these pipelines and how they intersect. So in terms of roles or specific, there is a huge array of different technical aspects and roles uh, that go into creating 3D imagery, 3D and visual effects imagery. Um, an industry, people do work in large teams and many people will work as specialists in one of these subjects although there are people that also work as generalists who work, work across different areas. Um, and on this course, there is, you will learn a broad range of, of skills, of industry-focused technical skills from our range of specialist lecturers. Um, so skills learning will be a big part of the course. 
Um, in addition to this, we also really emphasize uh, concept development and creativity. Um, we really believe in the, in, sorry, the importance of finding your voice, exploring your creativity, problem solving, experimentation um, in a unique way that's both technical and creative. So we don't just want to create technicians, we want to create technical artists. Um, conceptual and creative thinking are tools for problem solving and we really encourage students to have agency so that they can continue on to, in, into their journeys and continued future learning. Um, and we do this in a range of ways um, in, in the workshops, the seminars and tutorials and also through project work itself. So another big part of the course is uh, narrative and narrative structure. So you'll be looking at different ways, different storytelling ways. Um, you'll be looking at three, like for example, the three extra, three act structure, um, and also alternatives to that sort of classic three act structure to really help sort of push your storytelling capabilities. Um, Storytelling is a really important thing for people who want to work in the creative industries and it's a really important part of this course. You'll be, you know, building narrative into almost everything that you do. So who is this course for and who studies computer animation and visual? Um, so we teach this um, for complete beginners. We do understand that it's not the type of subject that most people will have um, learned at school, for example. Um, so you don't actually need prior experience in either 3D or visual effects to get onto the course. Um, you just really need to be really interested in the intersection of creativity and technology. Um, we're looking for people who are interested in developing storytelling as much as their technical abilities and also people who want to find their creative voice and express it digitally. Um, people who are interested in film, animation, image creation, and who want to work in these industries. Um, people inspired by the emergence and evolution of technology, and of course, people with a willing to learn, willingness to learn, sorry, um, people who want to experiment with visual styles and push themselves and leave their comfort zones. So this is the course map. So um, you'll see here um, through year one, we do actually um, teach both 3D and visual effects throughout year one. You'll you, you study both foundational skills and all of this year one is sort of aimed at people who are um, who are learning up, building up your skills. So um, by the time you reach, you end up, uh, get to the end of year one, um, you should hopefully be in a position to want to choose your specialism because when um, we move into year two, it then goes into special specialisms and you will choose either visual effects or 3D. Um, but whichever specialism you do choose, um, you will also learn the principles of the other one as well. Okay, so I was gonna hand over to Sam um, for this next part to talk you through the uh, 3D computer animation side of things a little bit. Are you there, Sam? I'm here. Um, hi, so yeah, the 3D path uh, the 3D specialism is about uh, digital art and, and motion. It's about, uh, so the, it's an ever-changing landscape of constantly evolving opportunities. Uh, it spans across hundreds of different fields. Um, just by having this degree, you can, you can work on all manners of things. Like, as I said earlier, I've worked um, for architecture companies. I've done um, event design, uh, created pre-visualization that then gets built into a live event, um, things like projection mapping, VR. So we'll look at a couple examples of these things. Um, but we're, we're looking for, we're looking to foster problem solvers. So we wanna create uh, independent people who can sort of work through problems themselves. So there's gonna be a lot of opportunity to um, 
kind of just teach teach and learn, uh, learn, learn yourselves and, and get help and uh, work independently alongside of us. Um, so we'll be exploring things like animation, film, television. We'll have a look at games. We're going to create models and we're going to look at how these models work across them. What are the differences between a model? How do you design something differently to be printed? You know, what are the different kind of limitations of each media? And as we're learning about how to build these things, we're going to be looking, at, uh, we're going to be talking about them in terms of all these different outputs. So rather than uh, some of the other courses that you might come across that are teaching you something very specific like games exclusively, um, which I think while it's brilliant in certain ways, it, it can kind of um, fix on a singular output. Uh, but we want to talk about the larger 3D field and, and where you can go with all these different types of mediums. Um, because I think as technology is moving forward, everything's really kind of blurring together and the skills that you have here are so applicable across different industries. Um, so I have students in the current uh, BA animation program uh, who are creating VR projects. We've had augmented reality. Um, so we'll, we'll work with characters and character rigs. We'll be learning uh, ZBrush, so we'll be doing organic sculpting. Um, we're going to take uh, an animation through from initial concept and story all the way through to a, a final rendered short film. Um, and as we go, we'll be collaborating, of course, with the visual effects students and working back and forth with them to, to give them what they need. And uh, it's up to you in your final year if you want to kind of fully focus on 3D or if you want to mix these skills together, do some digital mixed media, um, or yeah, come up with something entirely new. So we have um, VR equipment at the university. Uh, if you want to rent out any of that equipment, I have experience. I've worked as well at a VR company, so I'd be happy to work with you to do that. Um, I do a lot of 3D printing as well. I've got printers at my house, and we have at the university, we have um, several really nice printers, and we're getting a few more soon. Um, we so the the bottom left this is called photogrammetry so this is taking real world photographs and um, generating a three dimensional model from those images uh, and then the bottom right is projection mapping so these are just some of the different kind of less traditional aspects of 3D animation that still have a place within this course and and can work um, work in this program so. You know things like this photography you'll you'll be um, in the first year you'll be taking photography workshops uh, so you'll you'll know how to use the camera and you'll be able to do that and and by learning the, the real world camera you'll be able to take that into 3d and it's really gonna they're gonna inform each other because as as technology uh, moves along these programs are getting more and more physical they're they're drawing from real world so we really need to understand the, real, the real world constraints and then apply that digitally. Great, thanks, Sam. So uh, visual effects. So what is visual effects? Um, so this one is sometimes difficult for people to grasp, grasp exactly uh, what exactly what we do with visual effects. Um, but generally speaking, it refers to a range of different techniques that help to envision the imagination, um, working with film as well as um, 3D, um, as well, sorry, work, as well as 3D, it has hundreds of uh, jobs. Um, visual effects really requires people to be adaptive, adaptive innovators, uh, problem solvers as well. So there's a lot of similarities in terms of skill set um, between the uh, 3D and the visual effects specialisms. Um, I've got a video here that um, I wanted to play because I think it's sort of like sometimes a nicer way of kind of explaining it. It takes you th through some of the main um, core concepts of what visual what are used in visual effects. So um, I'm just going to play this now. Hi everybody, my name is Clinton Jones and today we're talking about special visual effects. Today we're talking about visual effects, not special effects. 
that's all the stuff that you do on set. Like, the pyrotechnicians, they're blowing stuff up. That's a special effect. Anything on set, anything practical. We're talking visual effects. So... So, comp compositing, let's talk about compositing. Compositing is when you take all of your assets, like you take your fake explosion, or you take your smoke asset, or you take your magic castle background that you wanna put into your video. You take all those layers and you stack them on top of each other to make them fit the scene. That's compositing. Taking all your elements, bringing it into one final good looking piece of footage. Tracking is when you replicate and apply the camera movement from the shot on that day to elements that were not there in the shot. Like, let's just say that your footage is doing this. And it's like, well, I need to like, tell the computer to focus on this movement, right? You, you choose tracking points in the footage and, and you're like, okay, now that I have that data, I'm going to parent this to the actual footage. So now it's blended into the scene. Does that make sense? So with tracking, you have 2D and then you have 3D. 2D is when your camera is on like a fixed point and it's just tilting and panning and looking around, right? It's not actually moving in 3D space. A 3D track is when the camera is doing all those things, but also moving through 3D space, right? Traveling through 3D space. Here's an example of a bad track. You can tell that it's not stuck to the footage. You can, it looks very strange, very abnormal. Like this, this thing actually isn't here. This looks fake. This is bad B-movie kind of material compared to a good track. And in a good track, you shouldn't be able to tell what is fake, right? If it's composited well, and if it's tracked well, then the effect should be invisible. So rotoscoping, <sighs> rotoscoping. Rotoscoping is when you manually cut out something in the frame, frame by frame for like the whole shot. And it's very tedious, very, very, very time consuming. Let's say you have a person and you wanna put an explosion behind them. Your footage is only one layer, so you need to cut me out frame by frame to add that explosion back here. I, I need to make me, myself a new layer in front of this explosion. Here is a good rotoscope. You can't really tell that they're rotoscoped out. It just looks, it looks normal. You know, the edges look clean. Uh, there's a bunch of detail there that's feathered where it needs to be feathered. Keying, right? Keying, green screens, blue screens. You're selecting that color and you're saying, hey computer, I wanna see everything but that color. Just take away that color. You need a color that people are not wearing. Like if you ever watch like the weatherman footage and like their shirt's missing, it looks like they're just a floating head in some pants. Make sure your actors are not wearing any blue. You for whatever reason can't film on location or something's too dangerous. Like in Jess's Big Date when Joey had to be standing right in front of his car that was getting blown up, glass was flying everywhere. And then you just piece those two together. The camera shouldn't have moved and you get something that, that looks pretty dangerous and pretty cool. So matte paintings have been around for a very long time. What people used to do is like put up a piece of glass and then paint on the glass, you know, painstakingly, just paint everything with a brush and actually get it there in camera and you composite it. Now we're lucky enough to be able to do it in the computer. And then you save out that image file, give it to the compositor, right? Because they're gonna take that image, they're gonna composite it into the shot. They're probably gonna motion track it if the shot's moving. All of these effects, all of these kind of um, tools are all used in pretty much the majority of most VFX shots. Then you got 3D stuff. You can model anything, trucks, cars, planes, tanks, whatever you can think in your head, you can model. It's like sculpting, right? And then you have texturing, which is essentially coloring. You can simulate explosions. You can simulate things breaking apart. You can simulate water. You can simulate any sort of like liquid or fluid. You got particle effects, which are tiny little points, thousands, millions of little points that add up to make water or add up to make smoke or add up to make fire. Particle effects, you can do a lot with that. Lighting, right? Just like we light here right now with these, all these lights, you light in 3D. So you set up your fake lights and they all do different things. You have rigging and rigging is when you set up like a character to move, like you say, here are all the joints and here are the bones. You actually have put in all the bones, you put in all the joints and then you connect them all so that when you grab this part, like the whole arm moves. Once your character's rigged, then you can animate it, right? So that gets into the character animation, which is a whole thing. I don't know how to do any of that stuff. So working in programs like 3ds Max or Maya or Blender or Cinema 4D, these are all 3D programs where you can do a number of things. So that's all the 3D stuff, there's a lot. 
we'll touch on that stuff later. But this whole video is an overview for you guys. So now like you know what tools you have at your disposal and you can start looking up tutorials for stuff, for all these things, right? And getting good at all these things. Um, we have links down below uh, for tutorials and sites that we like. Um, but yeah, the whole point is to tell awesome stories. This is another, VFX is another tool for you guys to tell really cool stories with. Um, so good luck on your VFX journeys and your storytelling journeys, and I'll see you guys next time. So hopefully that gives a bit of an overview of sort of some of the um, techniques and things involved in visual effects. And also, obviously, you can see it goes into 3D as well there because 3D is also a part of visual effects. Um, let me just go forwards on my slide. So, yeah, on, um, on the visual effects specialism, you will be all of those techniques that we just uh, that you just saw in that video. Are be things that you'll you'll be learning about, um, as well as a little bit more. So there's also a big side to the course which will be not just working in post on the computers, but also going out and filming. So they, we've got a green screen studio. So you'll be learning about how to light green screen, how to film green screen. You'll be learning um, about camera, about how to film things accurately for visual effects. Uh, so there'll be a bit of filmmaking involved in that as well. Um, camera formats, um, grading and wire removal. You see I've got a few um, a few examples here. We've got some ca a camera track here um, in the little thing up here. We've got some wire removal, which is another big part of uh, or cleanup techniques, which is removing things from film which is another big part of the visual effects industry. And then here, integration, uh, 3D and visual effects. And then we've got just a simple 2D um, screen track as well. So all of these things are sort of techniques that you use in order to build up your concept or, you know, create your film. Um, this is our green screen studio. Let's play that. And um, next I've got, um, so yes, just about the green screen studio, we've got a big green screen studio um, and it's really fun and students really enjoy sort of using it and part a lot of the course will be sort of doing work in the green screen studio. I have um, a couple of student films to show you now um, so that you can get a good idea of the kind of things that might come out on, in a graduate showcase. So I've got two quite long pieces of work here. They're about six minutes each. And one of them is uh, 3D from the uh, from 3D students who are studying 3D. And another one is from visual effects students. So I'm just going to play those um, for you now. So um, just give me a moment. So the first one called Dead Dreaming, um, it's, uh, it was a final major project from last year. This is Mag Mag Max Headroom, and what you're about to witness is one of the most sinister sounding intros to a trailer to one of the greatest epics ever produced in the history of t t television. And there's more, because you are going to see it as well. Yes, it. Yes, it. Yes. So! Sit back. Relax. And enjoy my film.
So that was uh, one of them. I'll just play the next one. Uh, the next that was the th the first one that was uh, fully all done in three D, and the next one you'll see a uh, visual effects one, which is sort of a, got a sort of integration in it of, of filming as well in there.
。你看那天空，像鸟一样飞行的汽车，和那像我们一样存在的人工智能。再远看那星星的城市，我不敢相信这一切都是这么的真实。I think it's incredible. Like before the first industrial revolution, you never know what humans can achieve. And I never used to believe in science fiction, but now I'm living it. I have to. We once again proved that man has the capacity to achieve the unlimited potential. Other thing of the day is technology. Look at those cars flying in the sky. I guess you have to admire those capitalists. Without their investment, these things just couldn't happen. AI has replaced the work of most human beings. And today, you don't see farmers in fields, or teachers in universities. I think it's cool. I mean, we've made rapid progress, but I feel like something truly important has been lost.吃饭之前别忘了洗漱。请关希瑞在吗？在的。帮我把投影仪关掉。好的，没问题。你准备好了吗？准备好什么？你知道的。去梦，去该去的地方。传输我的记忆文件。After demonstrators approach, RAF heavy bombers assist Marshal Konya's drive into the rush. Fury, nobody. It's about the old days. Shang Chuan, successful. Check to signal. Shang Chuan, successful. Check to signal. Shang Chuan, successful. Shang Chuan, successful.
开启记忆重建，重建成功。So there we um, have two, a lot of work gone into both of those, but I hope that gives you a sort of general uh, feel for the kind of things that, you know, you could be expecting to graduate with a sort of really substantial kind of final major piece of work. I'm going to move on um, and just to sort of take you through some of the stuff. So we've got, as, as well as uh, Sam and I, we've got, um, some really great specialist um, lecturers. Uh, we've got Florian, who's, I'm going to go a little bit quickly over the next few uh, slides. We've got Florian, who's an experienced uh, lecturer in 3D animation and has worked a lot um, in industry as a 3D artist. Um, we have uh, Sonia, um, another 3D artist who's worked at Escape Studios, um, and on the MA character creation, uh, character uh, creature creation, excuse me, um, and um, has a lot has a lot of experience in 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 animation, creature um, animation. Um, and Kelvin, another um, uh, lecturer who is experienced in again 3D and games and also VR and he Kelvin also has a strong kind of concept art storyboarding and visual development kind of uh, side to his uh, his teaching skill set as well Something's happening with my slides so um just to sort of round up I've got a few slides to sort of round up there's as we said uh, before uh, the two specialisms do um do collaborate together. So the visual effects and the 3D specialisms, you will be working a lot with each other in collaboration. Uh, there is also um, the, uh, the, the option of um, collaborating outside of the course with other course, with other um, BA or MAs even that um, are in moving image and digital arts like animation, games arts, VR, film, sound. So there's a huge, there's a load of sort of, it's a very vibrant community and a lot of other courses going on. So there is all, a lot of sort of um, opportunities for collaboration outside of the course as well as within the course. Um, so just quickly a little bit about kind of studying at university so as i said there is it is a really vibrant kind of lively um um uh, atmosphere um, with a lot of students from loads of different areas um and parts of the world and um it's you know there's a lot going on outside of class as well as within it. Um, we do use um, something called what's called blended learning. So we do um, quite a lot of pre-recorded lectures, um, especially in terms of learning uh, digital skills. We find it really really helpful and useful for people learning technical the side of things um, because it enables people to work at their own pace. And um, you can also go back over and sort of watch things again when you're learning. And we find that people really, really um, take to this method of teaching um, really well. And it also opens out the classroom time for the more, more creative talks. So we can think more about concepts and creativity and narrative and all of that sort of stuff, sorts of stuff and group tutorials within the classes. Um, and we do aim for consistency um, throughout with your schedules to, to help with the work uh, study work balance. Um, so during year one, you can expect roughly about four, four classes per week. But we do, as you go through the years, you do get pro progressively more independent. So by the time you reach year three, you're working not completely uh, independently, obviously you're still coming into classes, but you will be doing a lot of um, independent study um, throughout your final major project, because by that time you will have learned the skills to study independently. And the aim is 
is to make you independent learners so that you can continue to learn um, outside of, um, you know, past as well. Um, so LCC itself has loads of really great facilities. Um, we've got um, Creative Technology Lab, we've got 3D workshops, um, we've got something called the Digital Space where you've got loads of different software you can go and work. We've got uh, like the green screen studio, we've got a kit room that's full of like some great cameras, print making. Um, so there's a lot of really, really good facilities uh, within LCC um that are you know there for you to explore and 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 use we've got some more course specific facilities um like the green screen studio we've also got a render farm um for those of you that don't know what a render farm is it's it's something that basically especially within 3d render times can really be quite long and um and the render farms help speed up and manage the rendering process um, and it's a really really great facility uh, we're also looking um, at we've got a motion motion capture suite um, uh, and looking at expanding that suit sorry we've got motion capture suit so we're looking um, to expand that hopefully we'll have that in the near future um, I'm just speeding up a little bit because I'm conscious of time but um, just quickly about the software. So we've got loads of really good software as well. Um, I won't go through it all individually, but um, the two that are really, really important to this course will be Maya and Nuke. You may have never heard of them, but they are um, industry professional standard software that, you know, while building up these skills and, and, and learning these, these, these softwares, um, it is really helpful for you uh, moving on and progression into, in, into getting finding work. We've also got um, some quite good um, connections to industry. We get a lot of guest speakers coming in and we have um, a, a unit called professional practice uh, where we do actually have guest speakers, industry speakers, and we really focus on as well getting you a showreel that you can, as well as your final major project, that you can actually leave with a showreel that you can then use and building up things like CV, CV writing and websites so that you actually graduate with um, a portfolio ready to start kind of approaching um, companies to, to find work. Um, I'm not going to show the show reels because we're sort of running short on time. Um, so I'm going to just skip over that one. But um, just a little bit about our graduates. We do have um, um, graduates, for example, uh, Rhett Yen Chen, uh, a recent grad graduate who's now working at a company called Indu Industrial Light of Magic, which is a huge visual effects company, uh, mainly focusing on feature films. Uh, we've got the Heliantheus, what you saw earlier, that was uh, shortlisted for uh, um, the Brooklyn Sci-Fi Film Festival. And we've got other graduates that have gone on to work for The Mill and Compost Creative. Uh, there's quite a high percentage of graduates who, who are who, from LCC in general that do go on to, uh, to find employment. And we do have quite a few graduates, uh, recent graduates from, from our course that, that we're running at the moment that are also have moved on to postgraduate study as well and are now studying uh, for their masters. Um, so this is just like, as I said, the portfolio that you will leave with. Um, I think we're kind of coming to the end of, of the presentation really. So um, just, you know, you, we really do emphasize that you're graduating with a sort of uh, portfolio ready to, um, to, 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 to move into work and find employment so um the personal statement um so when you're applying oh so actually i i uh, think I, i'll go back so yeah when you're actually applying for um for the course um maybe um looking at your portfolio we really want to see your creative development and um looking at a range of sorts of things um that shows your kind of 
art skills, any for people that are interested in technology, computer graphics, art. As we said earlier, um, we don't really expect to see any visual effects or 3D in your portfolios, but um, just a range of different ideas and so you're um, open to experimentation and, and um, any sort of traditional art skills as well as that. As well as a part, personal statement that could show your interests um, and telling us really why you want to study on, on the course. We really try and put your personality into your personal statement. I think that sort of takes us to the end of the presentation. Um, I have overrun a little bit, apologies. Um, but do we have any questions? Thank you so much for that, Billy. That was really, really um, helpful and for Sam also. Um, so we do have a few questions coming on in. Um, one of them is, um, how is this different to games art and animation yet yeah, compared to the other courses? Yeah, um, so, um, so games art and animation, I mean, like I said, there are similarities within the course, but we don't focus we don't focus specifically on any one industry. So there is a huge there's a huge amount of skills that could come out of um, studying on this course. Uh, 3D and visual effects itself have lots of sub industries coming off of these sort of main disciplines. Um, so we're not kind of gearing towards any one particular part of the industry like games. Um, although having said that, you know, a, a graduate studying on this course could um, could move into games if they wanted to, but it's not focused, it's not targeted directly at that, at games. Um, so I'd say there's quite a, a wide range of skills. We also have bring, it's not sort of purely focused on 3D or anything like that. So we really bring in a lot of filming, sort of cinema, cinema, cinematic kind of or, um, element to it so that we've got kind of um, mixing kind of 3D, mixing film, um, mixing kind of um, a lot of different techniques. I think there's quite a wide range of skills that you would learn on, on this course. Um, and from BA animation, I would say it's probably with an emphasis on kind of more digital techniques as as opposed to more traditional animation techniques. Um, I don't know, Sam, did you want to add anything to that? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with everything that you've said. Yeah, I, I think we, uh, compared to animation, we kind of have more of a focus on industry as well, looking at industry practices, um, yeah. looking at the 3D industry. Um, I would say if, if you specifically knew that you wanted to go uh, directly into games, that might be better for you. But if you kind of want to keep it open, you're not totally sure, or you want to experiment with multiple types of media and kind of, yeah, just leave that, leave that open-ended a little bit, then this gives you that opportunity. Um, yeah, and I think there is a certain specific knowledge that you'll need when it comes to focusing for something like games. Um, and there's a there's even things like a specific artistic direction that that kind of you know there's a, a visual language that applies to games, but we're not looking at one specific visual language. We're looking at all types of languages and and really you know embracing all art styles. Yeah. And I think like just just re, um, kind of re-emphasizing what Sam just said as well about this sort of the, there is a bit, I, I guess, an industry focus, although that's not all the course is and we do. We're not just purely kind of like focused on industry. There is that and there is actually a huge industry um, out there that are kind of that we, we're very, very aware of. So we do kind of really think about things like show reels and how how the skills that we are teaching you on the course are actually going to help you get a job after graduating. Oh, sorry. One more thing I wanted to add to that too is um, we, we will have time to really tell stories in a way that you might not with games. A lot of the games, uh, you know, I'm not trying to just focus on games, but um, a lot of games is about creating assets to go into a game. So you wouldn't have as much time creating a film, for example, and you wouldn't spend as much time animating characters as you would in the 3D program specifically. Um, you, you would do a lot of that in 
the animation arts program, uh, but then again, it would be less digital. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much, guys. Um, another question we've got is, um, do we need any prior knowledge of 3D and visual effects before applying for this course? So I think I think Billy touched on that a little bit, but um, I would just to add to that, I, I think we're, you know, we'd rather see something that you're kind of experienced at and something that you're able to express yourself in a bit more, something that you can do that's creative. So, um, you know, if, if you happen to have a background, which we wouldn't really expect already in 3D, and you could kind of express yourself and tell tell stories that way, then that would be great. But I don't think, you know, we don't particularly need to see uh, just tutorials that you followed online, because I don't think that's quite as, uh, you know, that's not as unique to you and as creative as something like drawing, where you might have been doing that your whole life, and you can really um, show your personality in that. Yeah. I'd like we're really looking for those kind of creative skills um, and they're so important like you don't have to have even you know having an in, an interest in in technology and creativity is important but you don't have to have had a lot of experience in it um, you know building up your kind of creative eye is really important and and a lot of the you know drawing and and sort of art based stuff is is really really valid for that kind of stuff um and we do we start teaching in year one from the beginning so we don't expect prior um prior knowledge of any of this stuff yeah and if, if you did have prior knowledge we're probably going to want to reteach you in the way that we <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. um so don't feel too bad about that. Um, but yeah, just you know, a real eye for for presentation. You know, just making sure that you're really uh, valuing the aesthetic of what it is that you're presenting, and you're considering, uh, you know, the size and the relationship, and the you know, giving it a nice clean look with a nice breathing space on it. Those sorts of things are more important, I would say. Perfect. Thank you so much for just expanding on that a little bit more. And um, another question is, do you collaborate with other courses at LCC? Um, yes, there's there is um, especially in year three, there is the final major project is a collaborative project. Um, so it's very much up to students how they collaborate. Um, we encourage, um, there's a lot of collaboration obviously within the course because the skill sets tend to really go together, but we have students collaborating with sound arts, we have students collaborating with um, film students, with, um, yeah, across uh, lots of different... Um, yeah, there, there were some examples in that previous slide, but that's by no means comprehensive. There's so many different, you know, I mean, it's London, so there's just so many talented artists all around. We've had um, 3D, I've had 3D students that collaborated with fashion students from um, CSM and things like that. So yeah. really just being at the university, uh, it's just, you know, it's encouraging creativity and collaboration. So just attending different types of workshops is going to put, you know, these kind of open elective workshops will put you in touch with other disciplines and mm -hmm. uh, the creative tech lab has you know programmers and um, electronics and things like that so really it's it's kind of limitless and as Billy said it's just up to you to to bring those interests to ask us the question you know we just we just want to like support your creativity so you just need to kind of bring the ideas and bring the vision and we're gonna we're gonna help you to make something out of that yeah Thank you so much. And um, there's just one more question, um, and I know you've touched on it already, but um, it's about like what kind of jobs um, people go into after they finish this course. So um, there's a, I mean, there's a range of of jobs, but um, and it can be quite broad. But if we're going to sort of narrow it down on the sort of like the 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 kind of the very clear ones, so there's from the visual effects special, there's, there's, there's compositing. And um, I think a lot of people might not know exactly what that is right now. Uh, some, some people might do, but we will teach a lot of what those things are. And then from the more 3D side, there would be um, 
modeling, rigging, animating. Um, and these could be for, you know, like I said, it wouldn't, it could be for film or for animation or for games or for um, other, other parts of the industry. Um, but they're not, it's not limited. It could, there's also, you can go, um, I've had students that are interested in going into production more, more, the more production side of things, or concept art, storyboarding. Um, let me just think, um, yeah, map painting. So there's map painting, there's grading. Um, so there's there, there's actually quite a lot of different aspects um, or different roles that you could progress into, um, and yeah, we do. It's really we, sorry, Sam. Yeah, I was just just saying uh, there's there's thousands of different kind of roles and there's new roles being created all the time, um, and and a lot of times people might go on to do uh, a master's and they kind of take some aspects that they, they liked in their BA and then, you know, really steer into a different direction. Like you could end up um, getting more into programming or you could end up, yeah. as Billy said, in production or, um, you know, you could even decide to become a painter or a teacher or something, all sorts yeah. of opportunities. Yeah. Um, and we kind of help you throughout the course, kind of like think about what different roles there are as well so that you kind of educate yourself because I think we, we are aware that a lot of these jobs that people might go into after graduation are not always clear you know for people before they've gone out into the industry or studied a subject like this they're not uh, they're not always obvious jobs but they're is that there's a lot of jobs i mean the industry is booming especially um in the uk and there are um there's a lot of jobs out there for for people yeah. when i was studying 3d i you know i had no idea that 3d printing would even exist and it, it wasn't until years after i graduated that i i realized that this thing that i made on the computer i could actually hold it so you know some of the some of the opportunities haven't even been dreamt of yet yeah <laughs> yeah brilliant perfect thank you so much um, guys for all of that information it was really really useful um i hope everybody really enjoyed that as much as i did um so that is the end of the session um and thank you all for attending and um that's goodbye for now thank you, thank bye. you. thanks bye